So check this out. This week we had some friends share a story with us. They live in the community, they live in the neighborhood, and in our community we have several lakes and ponds and things of that nature. So they decided, the adventure seekers that they are, to go out after dark with one of those little headlamps on your head. And what they did was they went into a pond to find some wildlife. So what they found was one found some some tree frogs and some frogs and just kind of love that. And the other one, he found a snake. He found a poisonous, venomous snake. He went in knee deep and that's where he found it. And then he decided to go a little bit deeper just to kind of see where the snake would go and where it would do because he loves snakes. He did what I totally would not do. I would hide, hightail it out of there because I don't like snakes, but he went in to get a close-up shot to get a better picture of what the snake looked like. It's totally crazy. I hate snakes. Sorry to offend anyone, but I just really <laughs> don't like them. Can you imagine if a venomous snake got in your house? Can you imagine if it got in your vent system and it was lurking around in your house? Maybe you didn't see it for a week or two. I don't know about you, but if there was a venomous snake in my house, I would not sleep <laughs> in that house or close my eyes until we found that snake and got it out. Right? Absolutely. This is why we as believers, as followers of Jesus, we need to use our authority because we're in a battle and if we don't engage in the battle, we automatically forfeit and the enemy wins. In other words, we lose. Satan is looking for access in our lives. This is why we need to use our authority and guard our gates. Let's pray before we get into this morning's word. Father, we come before you now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for our friends and family that have gathered online. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you that this morning that the listeners will not hear our words, but Lord, they'll hear your words. We thank you that the end result will be they'll leave encouraged and changed, and they'll know what to do and how to use their authority. So we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So why do we need authority? Why? What, why, why do we need to use our authority? Because we are in a battle. And if we don't engage, we're going to forfeit and we're going to lose. Last week we talked about how we would never let a murderer into our house and kind of show them where our guns and our knives are, right? <laughs> because that just isn't very smart, right? <clears throat> well, whether you realize it or not, you're in a battle. The battle isn't really against black versus white. It's not Republican versus Democrat. It's not straight versus gay. It's not atheist versus Christian, Christian versus another faith. This is about the heart and soul of our nation. Jesus is the only way. He's not only the only way to heaven, he's the only hope for this nation. Remember, Satan is walking around seeing, trying to figure out who he can destroy. He is looking for a way in, just like a snake would look for a way into your house. You could really become overwhelmed and really fearful about that. But God is also always looking for someone who will respond to him. He's trying to get the blessing of God into your life. He's trying to get his power in operation in your life. There's really no reason to panic. There's really no reason to fear because the Lord is infinitely greater than the devil. Amen. We have to be awake and we have to be aware and realize that we're in a battle. Just because you don't engage in the, ma the battle doesn't mean that it's not going to be happening all around you. Just because you take a time out doesn't mean it's not still happening, right? <laughs> you can let the devil run your life and ruin your, run your life and ruin your life and advance his plans, or you can enforce the victory that Jesus paid for over 2,000 years ago and advance God's kingdom. Come on, so how do we use our spiritual authority? Today, we're gonna to help you unlock that power and use your God-given authority. See, I love superheroes. I love watching uh, superhero movies with the boys. I love watching Avengers. One of my favorite superheroes, though, is Superman. So here's the thing, is that we have to unlock the power and use it. See, the superheroes, they look like normal, everyday guys, but here's the thing. When the battle between good and evil began to rage, they turned into superheroes. They had the power. So we read this story in the Bible a few weeks ago, but let's visit it again. It's Matthew chapter 14, verses 24 through 31. It'll be up on the screen for you out of the New Living Translation. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land. 
for a strong wind had risen, they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called out to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? You know, this is such a powerful story. There's so many, there's multiple lessons in it. Yes. So Jesus is literally walking on the situation that the disciples are incredibly fearful of. The situation that should kill and destroy the disciples, he's literally just walking on top of that storm. No big deal for him. You and I have been authorized to walk on top of sickness, death, strife, anything that comes against us. That's right. We can take a step and start walking on top of that situation. We can walk right on top of it, whatever's trying to destroy it, and keep heading in the direction that God has for us. We're going to do that. We're going to walk on top of those storms just like Peter did. We don't have to sit back and just let the enemy beat us up with circumstances. Matthew 10, 1 says this in the Amplified, Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and he gave them authority and power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. So it's not just about Jesus giving the authority, but the real question is, will you step out and use it? It's <laughs> good. We're called unto, we're called unto, just like the disciples were, where they were given power, they were given ability, they were given authority, you know, to cast out unclean spirits. He gave them authorization to walk on top of that sickness and that disease. He gave them authorization to raise the dead, to cast out the devil. So here's the thing. Just like Peter, we can focus, at first he was focused on Jesus. Remember, his eyes were on Jesus. We can focus on Jesus, focus on the promise, because Jesus said, hey, it's me, come to me. Is it really you, Jesus? Yes, it is. And so based on that promise, he got out of the boat, right? right? And he kept his eyes on Jesus. But as soon as he started looking at that storm, as soon as that started to kick up and his little brain started working, all of a sudden things shifted for him. So we can pro focus on the problem or on our authority. Are you spending more time focused on the problem? Man, it's really easy to. I know if I watch too much news, I can't stop thinking about it, right? <laughs> so we can focus on, oh my gosh, look at the unemployment numbers are horrible. Look, my neighbor, it's got the Rona. What are you focused on? Is it that our faith is little like Peter's? Jesus talks to his disciple and he said to them, why is it that you have little faith? That's like harsh. Can you imagine Jesus saying that to you? And the thing is, his faith didn't endure, but just for a little bit. Because when he was focused on Jesus, he was strong. As soon as he looked down, he got that focus on his circumstances, he started to sink. And he only had faith for that short time. It's kind of like that example, you ever get a short burst of energy? And all of a sudden, you're just all energized. Sometimes you'll have a short burst of faith. And the reason why... You know that sometimes we just don't keep all the way through and persevere is because we let our distractions and we let the things around us the things trying to kill us and wipe us out become bigger than the promise that we've been given our faith can be small sometimes and it can last for just a little while well, good morning we are here to jack up your faith that's our goal this morning is to jack up your faith you have authority over violence over pestilence over sickness disease, over depression, over oppression, over anything that's trying to rob you of your authority and your joy and steal your faith. If your faith starts to slip, we want to encourage you, get in the Word. That's the answer is get in the Word. The Word will jack up your faith every time. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's the only way faith comes. I can't pray for faith. Faith comes because I believe I trust in God. The more I hear about God, the more I read the Word of God, it gets into my spirit and it allows faith to build up and to build. And So that's how faith comes. So we're here this morning to jack up your faith. You are an authorized user of God's amazing power. The best thing that pastors and leaders can do right now 
is to teach people about their God-given authority and standing in faith and on the promises of God. Right now is not the time for a feel-good message. We're all for that, but right now is the time to teach about the authority that God has given us. What we do as a church in this very moment will literally shape the future of this great nation and actually the world. Yep. We believe that wholeheartedly. Some people say if God is really in something, then it'll just work out perfectly. I strongly disagree. That's not true. He was totally involved with Peter walking on the water and he still fell in the water and the storm got the best of him. God's power comes to pass through us. He doesn't use us independently of ourselves. Come on, somebody. He doesn't use us independently of ourselves. He uses normal, flawed people, just like us, just like you. Um, Peter began to think about the storm, think about the winds and the waves and what was around him and how the boat was getting tossed. And then is this really Jesus? Is he a ghost? He simply lost his focus and uh, his focus on that power. And when he did, the power left, the power subsided. Peter changed, not the power. Peter changed, not the power. The power was still present. Jesus was still present, but Peter was the one that changed because he changed his focus. Power was still available. Power was still at hand. It was still able and still present to get the job done, to do what, um, what it needed to do. Peter thought about the possibility of what the circumstances could do. I could sink, I could drown, I could fall, we could die, whatever it could be. What changed? It's not the power, it was his perception. The authority and power didn't change. Power was still available to get that job done. The number one reason people don't receive God's promises is that they do not operate in their authority. I'll say that again. The number one reason people don't receive the promises of God is because they don't operate in their authority. You don't have to go to heaven, or you don't want to go to heaven and ask God, what about this, or what about that, or what happened here, and how come I didn't ever walk in this, and your word says this, how come I didn't receive that, and have God say, son, daughter, I authorize you to have that, to do that, to be that, to walk in that, to occupy that, but you didn't. You chose not to operate in it. It's not enough for you to believe that Jesus can heal or deliver or set you free. You have to believe that he can do it to you, that he can do it through you. Take your Jesus-given authority and do it. You've been authorized to do it. He gives us the right and authorized us to occupy until he comes, to bring the kingdom of heaven down on this earth and to operate and to walk in it and to occupy to change the culture, not walk in it, to actually, they don't want to cancel culture right now. No, we're here to occupy and to change culture. We're here to be the culture, the culture of heaven here on this earth. Amen. You have the authority, but you must believe that you can based off of what Jesus said. You believe that you can take authority over the, the forces of darkness and you can do it. You tell mountains to move, but you have to believe that they'll move. Pick up your Jesus anointing and use it. Quit waiting for your pastor or for someone else to do it. You've been authorized to do it. There's no voice stronger in your life operating in the authority that Jesus gave you than your own. You know, if we don't do it, it's just not going to happen. The spirit of darkness that's running rampant in our streets, the Rona that's trying to wipe out our health and our economy, the strife, the anarchy of the hour, it's not just going to leave on its own. Right. The thing is, believers have to have and take their authority over it. We have to cast the devil out. Anything of the devil, you have authorization and power over it. It does not have power over you. Fear, that's not from God, right. you have authority over it. Lack, not from God, you have authority over it. Sickness, <laughs> that's not from God, you have authority over it. The Rona, you have authority over it in your house. You say, the Rona is not coming to my house or my grandma or my nana or my Auntie Susa. Amen. I'm not having that. And you take authority of it. What you say really matters. 
And so the riots and the anarchy, we have authority over it. It's a spirit behind strife. We have authority over That's that. Right. Jesus paid the price. He gave us the keys and he just wants us to use them. You know, so many of us, you know, especially in this society, you feel like you have to be so careful what you say because you're going to offend someone. And we've almost gotten this put up or shut up. Remember when they used to have the gunfights, put up or shut up. Um, attitudes to life, you know, and that's really the strategy of the devil. If he can get you to put up and shut up, you're defeated. You're out. You lose because he knows if you put up and you shut up, he'll just keep pushing. He'll keep taking ground. If you don't take ground, guess what? He's going to take it. And so we have to quit putting up and start talking. Don't shut up at all. Someone probably needed to hear that today. <laughs> Don't shut up at all. Start talking. Start declaring what God says. Declare his promises yes. over your family. No more running scared from the devil. We have authority over the enemy. Anything he throws our way. What good is it for us to believe that Jesus can do it if we don't believe we can do it? He said he gave you the keys and he authorized you. You have to believe that for that to work in your life. You have power over the devil and we have to believe it and walk in it. We've been running away scared of the devil and no more running after today. We have power over him and we have authority and we're going to use it. Amen. High five in the emoji, somebody. Come on, <laughs> we're on fire today. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12 out of the Amplified. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire is fulfilled, it is a tree of life. See, a lot of us are sick at heart or brokenhearted because we think God's just not doing anything about this situation or about this struggle that I'm going through or that we're dealing with. But here's the thing. He's actually waiting on us. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on me. He's already paid the price for us to walk in complete victory and has given us the keys to the kingdom and has authorized us to use them. He's waiting on us to use them. Sometimes we don't expect healing or prosperity, but please listen to me closely. It is our God-given right that we are to expect healing. We're to expect prosperity. We're to expect peace in our homes. We are to expect favor on our jobs. We're to expect increase. We're to expect increase in our businesses. We're to expect provision and favor on our lives. It's part of our God-given covenant. It's not enough to believe that God can do it, but God has given us the authority to do it as well. When you don't know what you have, you simply won't use it. Remember, when we started this, we simply said and started this whole series off, we have to know who we are and what belongs to us as a child of God. You have authority. The responsibility is yours. Peter's sinking isn't the problem because Jesus met him exactly where he was. And immediately, what did Jesus do? He rescued him. God has given his word and will be with you, will be with me, will be with us together and help us execute our authority. I love that. So the, the pressure and the responsibility is not just solely on us. When we use our authority, God backs us up. He's the entity. He's the spiritual force that backs us up. See, we're, we're, we're operating um, from another kingdom, another level, another position. We're operating from heaven. We're not operating here on this earth. So that's where our authority begins is in heaven, but we walk it out on earth. Amen? So here's the thing is no more sad days, no more down days, nothing but glad days. We're going to have joy operating in our lives. Emotions should not govern our lives. God's given us authority. Let's use it. Can we use a church? Come on, somebody at home. Can we use our God-given authority? You are the redeemed of the Lord, and you're not moved by what you see. Amen? You know, in closing today, I know we're real passionate about this just because we don't want to see the devil eat your lunch. Right. During this time when he is just running rampant, we want to see you walk in victory as a believer and want to see you have everything that Jesus paid for because it's your, part of your covenant. So just a quick snapshot reminder, you're authorized, number one, by God Almighty. You are authorized. Number two, 
We want to challenge you today not to tolerate the junk that the enemy is doing and to start operating in your authority. Right. And number three, don't shut up. Don't do it. This is not the time to be silent. Start talking. Start declaring Amen. the promises of God over your city, over your nation, over your family, because his word is true and it works. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We don't ever like to leave our time with you without giving you an opportunity at home to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or even rededicate your life back to him. You see, God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for you and for me over 2,000 years ago so that we could be forgiven and cleansed of our sins. So Jesus paid that price for us. Someone had to pay the price, but God loves us so much that he sent Jesus. And Jesus gave his life and offered it up willingly for us. So know this is that when we breathe our last breath on this earth, if we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, it's our first breath in heaven, in restored relationship with God, our heavenly Father. So you wanna encourage us that you can live heaven here on this earth. You don't have to stay you know, depressed or sick or broke or walk in, in a, a constant struggle or, or frustrated in life. We wanna encourage you is that you can be set free, is that you can receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you can operate all that God has paid the price for you to operate in. So if that's you and you wanna receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, would you pray or pray with us? Don't put it off another day. This is your moment at home. So let's pray this prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. I believe. I believe. That Jesus is. That Jesus is. The Son of God. The Son of God. I believe. I believe. That Jesus died on the cross. That Jesus died on the cross. Just for me. Just for me. I receive you now. I receive you now. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Forgive me and cleanse me. Forgive me and cleanse me. Of all my sin. Of all my sin. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. If that was you, thank you. We celebrate with you this morning. Uh, if you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior or rededicated your life back to Him, hon, can you give some next steps for us? So in the comments of the live stream right now, you'll see a prayer request form. You can go ahead and let us know. If you prayed that prayer today, we wanna know. We wanna get you a Bible. We wanna connect with you and help you get on a good path for your new walk with the Lord. Amen. So you can fill that form out. And if you have a prayer request, maybe there's a need in your life, we'd be honored to partner with you and with your family and whatever that need is in prayer. So go ahead and fill that out as well. We're so thankful that you joined us today. We just wanted a quick give you an opportunity to participate in, in worship with your tithes and your offerings for our church family. Up on the screen you'll see all the different ways to give. We make it as easy as possible. You know, we just want to thank you again. This week our living room was completely <laughs> filled with food. We cannot walk literally in here. There was, We've picked up some more families that we're feeding, you know, as the pandemic continues and as people are furloughed and starting to just kind of take a toll a little bit on people. So we're so right. grateful for our church family that has been so wonderful to just continue to give and to sow um, and God's just blessing it and and we're connecting with these people and they're asking for prayer now it's just really wonderful so thank you so much for just being part of that and all that is to come with our launch in the fall we can't wait for all of that and to be gathering again soon. Yes. Let's pray over that. Let's pray a, pray a blessing over you before we leave today. Father, I thank you so much that you bless each person under the sound of my voice. I thank you, Lord, that they will connect with the truth that they heard today and begin to declare your promises over their lives. I thank you for blessing and increase in every area. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Thank you guys for tuning in. We love you. We're praying for you. We are believing, God, that you will have the very best week of your life. Have an awesome day. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye.